Everybody, the Super Vader 400 here, back for another review, back for another video, and this time, this is my first best movies of 2016 list. I meant to do this at the end of the at the end of 2016 and at the beginning of 2017. It's already about to be February 2017, so let's get this video started now. I was initially going to wait till I've seen all the movies that I wanted to see from 2017 but I decided to do a best list of all the movies I have saw from 2007, 2016 and later, later on, and later on this year, um, watch the other films and do another best list with all the films I want to see from 2016. Then also go back to the previous years, something I've been wanting to do, go, talk, go back to the previous years some of my favorite years like 2009 and uh, 2011 and of course 2014 14 these are some of my all-time um, favorite years and do year in reviews and best movies of um, those years but with that being said um, let's get on with this uh, video this is the webcam portion there will be a narration a narration portion on my uh, Doug a 798 channel with that being said, the very first film, the my opinion, already the best film of 2016, the number one best film of 2016, Doctor Strange. And the reason I have Doctor Strange as number one, because Doctor Strange was vastly different from any other comic book or superhero movie I've seen. This, unlike all the other Marvel Cinematic Universe films, which are all science fiction based, even Thor, the most fantastic and closest to Doctor Strange, had a had um some had a heavy science fiction science fiction feel in comparison to Doctor Strange, which is all about um chakras, magic and mysticism and mysticism and martial arts versus um plots rooted in science fiction, which are the other um comic book movies comic book um movies. This was also this was almost um anime like anime um like if they ever made a Naruto Bleach film. This is something. This is what I. This is what I expected to look like. Um, so um, yeah. Then of course, the film itself. The film itself being different. The ending of the film itself. Instead of a gigantic battle, which they had that. Instead of a gigantic battle. No, it ends with a final confrontation with Doctor Strange and Dormammu. With Dormammu um, being trapped in the same moment for all eternity. And, and Doctor Strange, instead of defeating or killing Dormammu. He's 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 incapable of defeating the Marvel. His only his only chance of victory, his only chance of victory, or at least to save the Earth, was to trap the Marvel in that same um, loop and force him to bargain to leave leave and leave and take his zealous with him and leave her forever. Love so love how they redid um, Mortal, and I love how they followed the comic books, but changed the certain changed a lot of things to make it more modern for certain um, audiences and. So yeah, like I said, Doctor Strange, that's the best film of 2016, the best film of 2016. Um, next film is, the number two film is, see, this was, it was a toss up between which was going to be number one and number two, but the next film, Suicide Squad. 
Suicide Squad. Yeah, Suicide Squad. Um, reason they're number two is because um, they, in my opinion, even though they, they um, they they weren't well, they didn't, they weren't well received at the, they weren't well received by, it wasn't well received by critics. Um, Suicide Squad did the impossible. They made a supervillain movie. They did what I didn't think could ever really be done, and that's make a film centered around supervillains. But now you can do that in this film. They did it despite the negative reception. This film, um, this film, this film, um, this film topped the box office. Talk the top the box office, and they're already announcing spinoffs featuring the Dead Shot. They already announced spinoffs featuring the Dead Shot and Harley Quinn character, and of course a sequel focusing on the Katana character, Katana um, Katana um character. But this film right here, one of the one of the best comic book movies, one of the best comic book movies I've seen. Love 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 the concept, and I love how perfectly it fits in the DC Cinematic Universe. Coming into this film, I thought this was going to be the worst film of all time. I was in this film to see the roster. While I wasn't familiar with Suicide Squad, or I didn't remember Suicide Squad, they were in an episode of Justice League, but they were called Task Force. They were called Task Force, and that was so long ago. Um, I was familiar with each character. I was familiar with each character, so I didn't need much development on the characters. And... Um, and not only like and so yes, and not only was the film good, not only was it not terrible, not only was it good, but it fit perfectly in DC Cinematic Universe. When I saw the trailers, it didn't appear to be in the same world as Man of Steel and Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice, Dawn of um Justice. And and already, as you can see, it's already uh, since it's number two. I think it's currently the best DC. It's probably the best DC EU. Um, movie that's going to be surpassed by Wonder Woman and Justice League next year. Justice League next year. Like I said, it, it, this is why I'm glad I supported the DC Cinematic Universe. They're going to keep getting better and better and better from him. And then also, finally, I like how this film, unlike other comic book adaptations, this film, for the most part, stuck true to its comic book, um, stuck true to its comic book source material it's almost spot on with the comic books only changing um several things in the comic books the original suicide squad of course the original suicide squad started in the 19 um late 1950s with rick flag leading a team of soldiers fighting various monsters which they alluded to that in the beginning of the film where rick flag said forget these anti-social freaks let me build you a team and we'll what's his name what's his name that's what they were alluding to in the um comic in the uh, what's his name then of course the more modern adaptations of suicide squad which is what this film is more based on the more modern adaptations um there's several members but the two most constant members are um floyd lawton dead shot and digger hartness captain boomerang captain boom captain um Captain Boomerang and Deadshot, who is historically a villain and an anti, and who is historically a villain and a rival, a foe of Batman. As you can see, slowly over time, he's slowly becoming an anti-hero, an anti-hero. So, um, so, um, yeah. And then, um, each character was who they say they were. And each character was um spot on. With, of course, I mentioned Will Smith, um, Jesse Hernandez, Jesse Hernandez, um. Um, Joel Kinnaman, Joel Kinnaman, and of course, um, Margaret Robbery, Robbie Margaret, um, I think that's her name, Harley Quinn. These guys were the inner piece of the films, and everyone else in the film did such a phenomenal job, did such a, um, phenomenal job. So, like I said, um, and that's one of the reasons I said in my, um, Suicide Squad review, I love both the Marvel and DC Cinematic Universe, but I think the DC Cinematic Universe is um a thousand times I think DC Cinematic Universe is a thousand times better because one of the things I like one of the things I like about the DC Cinematic Universe they make comic book based movies whereas Marvel mostly makes science fiction movies with Marvel superhero characters DC Extended Universe they actually make um comic, comic book movies they put an evil witch Enchantress which is one of the reasons the film wasn't like everyone wanted Joker to be the main 
background they want this to be based on of Assault on Arkham, which they use elements of that, but they had um, Enchantress. So, um, yeah, Suicide Squad. That's that's number two. Number three. Number three. It was a toss up between this, but number three has to go to um. No, no, not before I get to that. Number three. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, out of the shadows, man. Talk about surprising the hell out of me, man. I knew Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, out of the shadows, would be a great movie, be a great movie. But I didn't think it would be one of the, my opinion, one of the best films of 2016. It got, um, in 2006, 2016, they didn't make as much money as it should have been as as the first one did. But this was one of the coolest films. This was one of the coolest um, comic book movies I've seen, and in my opinion, it's the best Ninja Turtles film of all time. The two, Out of the Shadows is the best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie of all time. The first, the, 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 the prequel to this, the, the 2014 film, that's a better science fiction action film, science fiction action film, but this movie right here was a better Ninja Turtles. You got um, the turtles have been heavily redesigned, which I thought was cool. Heavily redesigned, um, heavily redesigned. You have Bebop, Rocksteady, Bebop, Rocksteady. Shredder looks closer to his cartoon counterpart, and of course, as the main, as the you have Baxter Stockman, and finally as the main antagonist, Crane, with the actor portraying him sounding sounding just like them, and Crane having a body. That's heavily designed, but similar to what he looks like in the uh, 80s cartoon. I thought, when I saw Crane, I thought he was going to look like his, um, the 2012 um, series, which is pretty much what this film, um, this film mostly, they take inspirations from all eras of the Turtles, but mostly the 80s and the current 2012 cartoon airing right now, airing right now. This film right here was the um, best, and I hope so far, according to um, one of the producers, there's... There is no talk of a team TMT three yet. There's no plans for a TMT three yet, but I hope they um make a follow up to this film. They'll probably they'll probably reboot it. They'll probably reboot it. But I want to follow up. I want to follow up to the film. I want to see more villains and more characters come to life on the screen. Only problem I would have with this film, the only reason why it's number three and probably not number one, was because well, number one since it was Ninja Turtles film, I wasn't expecting um any Oscar worthy material um number two um there wasn't a lot of action see the first one was a much better science fiction um the first one was a much better science fiction action film this one right here but was a much better film overall yeah um was a much better film overall but yeah this film didn't have much action it was more science fiction adventure and plot and story in this film than there was um in the first one, not the first one didn't have any of the, the, these things either, but um, that was something I noticed in this um, awesome movie right here, um, awesome film um, right here. Um, what's the third film? Oh yeah, the fourth film on this list. The fourth film on this list is Batman v Superman. Dawn of Justice. The reason they're not higher was because of Warner Brothers, man. See, the theatrical version was good. The theatrical version was good, but it was lacking. It was missing some stuff. The Ultimate Edition was so much better, man. Was so much better. It covered up some of the plot holes and explained more and gave more depth to the Batman Superman rivalry. Um rivalry in the film also gave us a look uh, gave us a look of Stephen Wolf the antagonist of the upcoming Justice League film later this year later on th later on this year but man you talk about Batman v Superman one of the best comic book films of all time reason why it's not number one was because some of the mistakes one of them made like I think the character Doomsday first off number one Warner Brothers, and this this is something that needs to stop. They need to stop interfering with the director's vision. This House of Suicide Squad was also a victim of this. They need to stop interfering with the director's um, vision. And 
they also stop revealing so much in the trailers. They, they reveal Doomsday in the trailers. Doomsday should have been a total mystery. How awesome would it be if they didn't reveal Doomsday at all and he would have randomly showed up in the film. He would have showed up at the end of the film for the final for the final battle. But that's why Batman v Superman was awesome. Once again, going back to why I said the DCU, the DC Extended Universe is much better than Marvel. is because, like I said, they make comic book films. See, in Marvel, this is both good and bad. In Marvel, they like to tone down characters to make human characters um, more useful. In the comic books, characters like Ronan, Drax the Destroyer, um, Thor, Loki, the Incredible Hulk. These characters in the comic books are extremely powerful. Even Iron Man are extremely powerful. In the film, they're more human. They're more human. In these, in Batman v Superman, they lived up to how powerful, how powerful these characters are. You saw how much of a, you saw how powerful Batman, Batman, Batman with his bat armor and kryptonite was weakening and beating the living daylights out of Superman. Then finally, the final battle, the Trinity, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman versus Doomsday. And before that, well, you, you, before that, you see Doomsday, and you see Doomsday and Superman fighting all over Metropolis, fighting all over Metropolis, taking it into space. Superman breathing in a kryptonite missile and turning it into a kryptonite torpedo and turning it into a zombie, turning into a um zombie. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman taking her shield and fighting and and Superman and Wonder Woman triple teaming him, and finally Superman. And finally, Superman being forced to sacrifice himself, to sacrifice himself to stop, um, dudes, like they lived up to how powerful these comic book characters, um, are. This is the most powerful and most physically imposing I've seen of Superman on the big screen, on the, um, on the big screen, man, on the big screen, and, um, like I said, in Batman v Superman, that was a comic book or a graphic novel. A graphic novel is much better because it's, it's violent. That was a graphic novel come to life. That's one thing I like about Zack Snyder. Unlike most people who think about, who who don't think about special effects until it's time to animate it, until it's time to create it, Snyder, he's an artist and has this special effect in his head before it's, before it's ever put on screen. Before it's ever put on um, screen. Just look at the scene where Superman is hovering in the air and Batman has his bat signal waiting on him. Then when these two larger than life figures, larger than um, um come face to face, Bruce, you don't understand. I understand. Like I said, man, um acting, story, action, everything. One of the best comic book films I've seen. The only reason it's not higher on this list was because of um Warner Brothers was because of Warner Brothers interfering with the director's vision. Next is the highest grossing film of this year, Captain America Civil War. Man, was this an awesome movie. It was this an awesome movie and a, and actually a, pro, a, a, a two years prior to the release of this film, I didn't even want to see this film. I was angry when I heard that Captain America 3 would be Civil War would be civil would be um civil war i saw that as a desperate attempt to counter batman v superman which had a similar premise batman um v superman which had a similar premise and i also did not want to see a film where captain america and iron man are fighting each other and spider-man was in the middle but after seeing the event after seeing the events of age of ultron and seeing the large and the large and the large cast of ki characters that will be featured in this movie that will be featured in this movie I couldn't wait to see the film and finally got to see the film one of the best superhero movies of all time reason is not higher because the biggest problem I have with this film is that it's not that much of a superhero movie it's a science fiction war film with superheroes in the film with superheroes um, in it. While I love the story, the realism, there's too much realism, especially with my favorite character in the film, one of my favorite characters in the film, Sam Wilson, the Falcon. Sam Wilson, um, the Falcon. In the comic book, Sam Wilson, the Falcon, is a bird human, a, a, um, a Marvel equivalent of a meta-human, of a meta-human. In this film, he's a guy with, with metallic, 
with um metallic wings metallic wings like i said um captain Amer uh, captain america the winter soldier that is an awesome film however that film is unwatchable due to the monstrosity that sam wilson falcon anthony monkey was where was wearing in that film that caught that movie is as awesome as that film is that movie is unwatchable because of what he was wearing because of what he was um where I'm glad they in Avengers Age of Ultron and Ant Man they gave him the current costume he has now, but Fal and in the comic books Falcon he got his powers from a bird. He a Red Wing. The bird is a robotic looking machine. Is a robotic um looking is a robotic um is a robotic looking machine. It's like I said, too much um realism. So yeah, while being the best film of all time, too much um realism. But the cast of characters, the cast of characters. The cast of the cast of characters, Spider Man. Oh yes, the new. Oh yes, I'm um, Tom Holland. Spider Man killed it. I was laughing throughout the entire fight, man. Um, also Sean Broick, Shia Broick, uh, did a phenomenal job as Black Panther. However, I did not like his costume. I didn't like his costume. That looked like Catwoman. That didn't look like no Panther. That didn't like a, a Panther warrior. That looked like Catwoman. Um, Catwoman. Um. I love how they judged all these superheroes, and I love the end, the the relevant the realization that Bucky, the Winter Soldier, killed Howard Stark, Tony Stark's father, and finally, um, I like how the film ended where every, where all the Avengers, with the exception of Iron Man, Captain America, Captain America, and the people on Iron Man's team were in prison, were in prison, were um in prison, and how sympathetic the the main villain, um, Zemo. Zemo was how sympathetic and different he was and how much destruction and damage he did to the Avengers he did more destruction and damage to the Avengers than, than anyone before him and he was the weakest he was the least powerful of all the characters they fought so far it makes you wonder now this has happened so now we got Thor Ragnarok and then we got Avengers Infinity War so um yeah so yeah Number five. Number five has to be X Men Apocalypse. X Men Apocalypse. Now, um, now in the trailers, um, this film didn't look all that good. However, I want to see this film because of the cast of characters they were having this film. So plot wise, while this film wasn't the best, plot wise wasn't the um, best. Plot wise wasn't the best. Um this film this film first off I like how they not only took aspects from the X Men, the original X Men comic books, the original X Men comic books and the Ultimate comic books, but they also took several um things from the television series X Men Evolution. X Men um X Men Evolution X Men Evolution and I like how this they finally got an X Men movie that centers around that centers around Cyclops that centers around Jean Grey Cyclops Nightcrawler Nightcrawler Storm Angel who even became Dark Angel Archangel in this film they never called him that Archangel um Archangel um yeah and they, and they finally got Apocalypse as a main as a main um Antagonist. There was even a cameo from Wolverine as Wolverine. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine as the Weapon X. The Weapon X. So um, I like how this film was more X Men than the previous um adaptations of um X Men, which the previous adaptations of X Men are great. Believe it or not, are great comic book films after rewatching them, but they are piss poor X Men films. This was more of an X-Men film despite a lot of differences with the comic books and problems with the story and of course not doing Apocalypse Justice not doing Apocalypse Apocalypse of Justice he should have been more powerful this Apocalypse was Ivan Ooze from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie and he was also Ronin from Guardians of the uh, Galaxy wanting to cure the wanting to cure the world by destroying it and they didn't make it clear what his goals um really were So um, so yeah, and then other another re another reason why it's so low is because as awesome as this film is, 
the first half of the film, the first half of the film, uh, um, the first half of the film is boring. I even had a hard time getting through the film and almost gave up on the film because of how boring it was in the opening minutes. But I really wanted to like this film and I really wanted this film to be good. I really want this film to be good, so I stayed and watched, but the final battle, the last, what was it, 30 or 40 minutes of the film, which is when Stryker's team comes in and shoots everyone, leading to that awesome scene with, um, Quick, with that awesome scene, with Quick, that phenomenal scene that everyone likes with Quicksilver, but that and the final battle between the X-Men and versus Apocalypse's Four Horsemen was phenomenal. That is worth the price of admission. That was worth the price of admission. So, um, yeah, that's um, that's why this film is number five. That's why this film is number five. Now, the last film on this list, the last film on this list um, of the films I've seen this year, of the films I've seen this year, the last film on this list is Deadpool. And the reason Deadpool is last because I initially didn't like Deadpool when I saw it in theaters. Now after seeing after not now that I have the now that I have the film now that the film is on DVD and now that I have a website to go to go to and watch the film I can skip the parts I do not like I can skip the parts I do not like and this is something I've always wanted so why it's not as good as it's not as good as I thought a Deadpool movie should be I always wanted a Deadpool film and Ryan Reynolds is awesome in the role of um. Deadpool, role of Deadpool, and while this film wasn't as funny as I thought it would be, there were several funny moments, mostly when he's breaking the fourth wall, but all the um, immature sexual humor and just bad puns and jokes, that, that has to go, and his friend Weasel, portrayed by T.J. Miller, was also um, hilarious, and I like how, despite being different in a lot of areas from the comic books, this for the most part stayed true to the, um, to the, um, to the com to the comic books, but it's last because of all, like I said, all of the immature humor, all of the immature humor, bad jokes. His love interest, who in the comic books is a shapeshifter and a mute, and it's just a lame woman. It was the worst character in the film, and the second worst character in the film was Angel Dust, who was a heroic character in the comic books, but here she's a villain, and then they wasted G Cyborg Gina Carano's um character. At, they wasted Gina Carano's talent by just having her play um, a version of Angel Dust who is not Angel Dust just to fight Colossus. I also didn't like Colossus's voice. I wish they they wish they would have got the actor from the previous X Men movies, and they originally did got him, but he left when they heard he was gonna dub over his voice. I can't blame him. I can't blame him. I'm actually angry they dubbed over his voice, man. I'm angry they dubbed over his voice. So with that being said, um. The, all of these, these were the best movies of 2016 in that specific order. All right. Um. Um. Like I said, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna redo my 2016 list after watching all the other films I want to see from that year. All the other films I want to see from that year, and I'm gonna go back to the previous years. I'm gonna go back to the previous years, like some of my favorite years, like 2008, 2009, 2011, um, 14. 14, 15, 15, and redo the year in reviews of those movies and do the best movies of those years. All right, with that being said, I'm done, people. Time to hit my music. Stars,